Brian Catequitz Baseball. He's here today to talk about one of his passions, pre-1950s baseball. Who knew there was pre-50s baseball? Welcome, Brian. Thank you, John. Nice to be here. You know, so many of us know the golden age, the 50s, the 60s, the mantles, the marises, but there's a whole world before that, isn't there? Oh, yeah. They, the the hobby is very diverse. The field is very wide. Uh, the, the, the good material to, to start investing is the pre-1950 material. How far back do baseball cards go? Uh, the, the beginning of baseball card collecting it started in 1886 with the Old Judge Cigarette baseball cards. They were issued in cigarette packs called Old Judge Cigarettes, made by Goodwin and Company. So it started with tobacco. So do you have some here we could take a look at? Uh, sure. Let's check it out. All right. So what am I looking at here? This seems to be a very early 1800s, isn't it? Or late 1800s, early 19th century. Yes, that's an 1886 Old Judge baseball so card. you were just talking about? Yeah. Right. That was the first baseball card that people collected. And it was made to be collected by the tobacco company. That's correct. And does it have on the back something about the tobacco company? No, it doesn't. Uh, no, it has no, on so the, the back front. is plain. So it's all on the front. And these are what, cut out of the tobacco packs or there were inserts in the tobacco packs? Right, they were inserted into the cigarette packs. They were actually used to hold the cigarettes together uh, okay. so that the cigarettes won't move around in the packs. So they're actually filled. Now we have something else here that's totally different, a little bit bigger. What's the story with this one? That's a circa 1870s. That's called a CDV card. Those were photographic images, in this case, of baseball players mounted on a cardboard stock. Okay. That's how baseball cards really began. This is one of the early ones. And this started, this does, no, nothing on the back. So the backs of these are plain also. You were saying this was the first type that was created to be collected, to wasn't be it? To be collected, that's correct. And that's what age again? Uh, circa 1870s. Uh, the first baseball card that was ever made was 1863. Pretty this cool. Is circa 1870s. So what's kind of value on something like this? Uh, that piece, because of the condition, can go for about $700 to $900. Right now, oh, I'm sorry. sorry, because it's, it's a generic player. It's a generic player. It's going to say because there's no name there. And we start getting to color now. Color is more what we're familiar with, yet still that old style look. What are we looking at here? Uh, we're looking at an Allen and Ginter card from 1887. This was the first lithographic baseball cards made. Hmm. Color lithograph. So how do people collect these? By player, by team, by the ages of them? They collected by the ages and also by just the issue, just to say they own an Allen and Ginter. And what got you started? Uh, I just I just fell in love with the baseball cards since I was 10 years old. I glanced at a card and I, it was love at first sight for me. And these are not the type of things you're going to stick in the spokes of your, your, your little bicycle there. <laughs> no. You're driving around, are you? No. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, now, let's take a look at some more. What makes these cult desirable or valuable to collectors? Now, let me take a look at this next stack okay. that you have over here. What sort of things drive the value? Well, uh, uh, condition drives the value, but with this stuff, uh, you, you really don't, uh, people want it in any condition. Uh, this card, for example, is considered the first major baseball card set of the 20th century. Oh, okay, so now we're into 20th century. And uh, that's called a Breach Williams card. And that's the player that we're seeing here? Or is uh, that the... That, that's the manufacturer. The manufacturer. And, ah, they do put in the back here now one of 150 prominent baseball players. So by this time now, they are saying, all right, let's get them to buy all 150. That's correct. What kind of value are we looking at here? Uh, those book for about $2,500 apiece for a common player. There is a Christy Mathewson, who's a Hall of Famer in the set, that's worth $22,500. They're very okay. rare, very significant. Very significant. Now, I notice you've got a Honus Wagner here. Now, is this the Honus Wagner we've all heard about? It's not the, uh, the Mona Lisa Honus Wagner, <laughs> but uh, it's the same portrait as the famous uh, Honus Wagner tobacco card. Uh, this is a caramel candy card made from 1910. Oh, so the candy company started getting to this as well. So I guess by this time it was a big collectible, so everybody's trying to get on the bandwagon to make a buck on it, don't they? That's correct. So yeah. what's this Honus Wagner worth? Uh, in near mint condition, that card can, I, I've seen it sell for seven to eight thousand dollars. Uh, in that grade, about fifteen hundred. Okay, well, what makes Honus Wagner so valuable? Why does everybody want that one card? Well, uh, you know, it, it, he's very significant in the hobby because of his name and the okay. most valuable card in the world. And uh, they just want, they want to say they own... They own something they, like they that. Own, like, they own a Wagner. Now, here we're going to something that's starting to look like more the modern cards, where you're actually seeing a player in a more realistic pose. What is this one telling us? Uh, let's see. This is a... What's that? Jordan T206 yep. uh, color. That's the first... That's, that's actually the most popular issue in the 20th century. Those are white border cards from okay. 1909. That's the first year of color from the 20th century, the first color cards. Okay, and still cigarettes. Cigarettes, right. That's pretty interesting. Now, cigarettes stopped being sort of the uh, supporters of baseball after a while. When did that finally happen? 
Uh, I would say it happened in 1917. Okay. And then. Uh, Caramel cards really started happening, and yeah. into uh, the uh, early, early gum cards. These old cards, I mean, condition I know is always important with most things like this, but condition with these older cards isn't quite as significant, is it? Because uh, they're so rare. That's correct. Yeah, you, you, uh, people want it in any grade. It's just hard okay. to just just trying to find one is uh, it's such a challenge. But how do we want to store them? Give us an example over here of the best way to store them and handle them, right. because that does become important. They're so fragile. Right. Well, I pref I always prefer this type of loose site because the card doesn't move around. Yeah, that's pretty uh, sturdy. That's not going to flop around, is it? And you always want to hold them by the sides, don't that's you? That's correct. Uh, you don't want to uh, put your finger on the front of the photo. You don't want to leave uh, photo marks, uh, fingerprint marks. Okay. You want to hold it by the side. All right. So they are all photo lithos, most of them, even the black and white, aren't yes. they? Yes. All right. Now, you've got a favorite card, of course, right. and you've got one of them here. Let's take a look at that and tell us what this is, and, what, and I notice you've got this really mounted differently. Right. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a, uh, it's called a drum back. It's uh, one of the rarest uh, 20th century tobacco cards. They were issued with the white border set. Uh, mm -hmm. The white border set uh, where Wagner was issued, um, they, these cards were found in 14 different cigarette backings, cigarette packs. Okay. Uh, the drum is actually the uh, rarest cigarette brand. If you and can what find kind of value are we looking at here? Uh, in that condition, about nine hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay, let's get to the more modern era, like the nineteen thirties, where people can really see what we're looking at, and that's what we're seeing here, isn't this? This is more like caricatures, but it's starting to approach the sort of cards that we recognize today, don't they? Yes, uh, this this issue was made by Gaudi. Gaudi Gum Incorporated were the uh, was the uh, major manufacturer of baseball cards in the thirties. And this is a 1938 Gaudi so gum. So this is the start of the gum baseball the cards that we all know. That's correct. Okay. So what sort of value we're looking at these sorts of cards? Uh, well, there are a couple of Hall of Famers there. They book for about $200 a piece. Okay. Uh, the, the, the regular commons book from like $75 to $85 a piece. All right. Now, we get into the 1940s. We're seeing these are the 1940s cards. What are we seeing here with the 1940s? Right. After Gaudi, uh, another company was uh, issuing baseball cards, another major company called Gum Incorporated. Uh, from 1939 to 1941, they issued the major set called Playballs. And uh, th this is the major set of the 1940s. These are called Playball okay. cards. Give me a quick value on these. Uh, let's see. We have Hall of Famer there, worth about $250 a piece. Hmm. So this is a whole special world, isn't it? Back before the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Quite yeah. an education, man. Thank, Thank you, you very Brian. much. Thanks for having me. Very cool. You can get in touch with Brian by sending your emails to hobbycat1 at aol.com.